In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to extend our previous lighting project to include texture mapping. Now there really hasn't been a lot of change to the code, but I did load a different model in line 5, in this case the header file creature.h. Now if you look down in lines 33 through 36, you can see that I've declared a few variables to hold the IDs of a texture buffer, as well as the IDs of a few variables in the shader. Specifically, textcord ID is going to be related to the shader variable textcord, and text ID is going to be the ID of the shader variable called texture. Now if you scroll down to line 61, you can see a function called load bitmap from file. Now you can look at this code if you like, but realize the end result is that if you pass it the name of a file, it'll fill these variables width, height, and size for you, and put the raw image data into that variable pixel data. Now we're going to skip over a lot of this code because it's the same, and we're going to have a look at main. Specifically, we're going to look at line 295, and you can see that because we have eight pieces of data associated per vertex now, I've updated the buffer size. And then, in line 302, I put the UVs onto the vertex buffer just after the normals. The last change to this file is between lines 317 and 339. In lines 317 through 320, I'm loading the bitmap from file. If you look at line 322, I enable 2D texture mapping, and then in lines 323 through 325, I load the image data onto the texture buffer. On lines 327 through 330, I tell the shader variable s underscore v text chord where it can find the texture coordinates in the vertex buffer. Then, if you look at lines 332 through 335, I set the texture wrapping options to GL mirrored repeat, and then the minification and the magnification filters to GL nearest. Finally, the last three lines of this section map the shader variable called texture to texture unit 0. Alright, so let's have a look at the vertex shader. Alright, now not a lot has changed with this code either, but if you look at lines 7 and 8, you can see two new variables. The first is the texture coordinate of the vertex, and the second is an interpolated version of that texture coordinate that gets passed to the fragment shader. Beyond that, the only thing that we do is assign SV text chord to text chord in line 29. Alright, so let's have a look at the fragment shader now. And you can see here that we've kept a lot of the code from last time as well. Now if you look at line 8, you can see the interpolated texture coordinate coming in from the vertex shader, and you can see the texture variable on line 9. Now if you look at main, we're still using the lighting equation from last time, but look closely at line 21. Here you can see that I've called this function texture2d, passing it the texture and the interpolated texture coordinate. I then take the color that returns and multiply it by the diffuse intensity to calculate the diffuse color. So let's go ahead and run it and you can see that we have a texture on this creature. Now, just as a note, I got this creature from Mixamo.com, which is a wonderful resource, so if you get a chance, go check him out. However, right now, the creature looks more like a plastic action figure because he's so shiny, so let's go ahead and fix that. So what I'll do is I'll drop down here to line 24, and this is where the specular component is calculated, and change it from 30 to 3, and then also probably drop these values from 0.9 down to 0.1. So I'll run it again, and you can see that we get something a little bit more reasonable. Alright, so I'll go ahead and shut that down. So that's it. Hopefully you can see that texture mapping drastically adds realism to the scene, and it only takes a little bit more understanding of computer graphics and a few lines of code.